Alright guys, so the Iranian government is getting in on the old dating app game. Is this because they've seen the success of Tinder and they're thinking, well, this could be easy money for us? No, that's not the reason. The reason is because they're looking at demographics and population trends and they can see Iran could be in huge trouble in years to come. We're going to see some graphs and stats later on. But first, let's have a look at this app and see what it's all about. The Iranian government that's released this state-sanctioned app called Hamdam. And it's the only legal dating app in Iran and requires users to complete a psychology test. Couples must also agree to have a consultant check in with them for four years after they marry. So strings are attached with this app. It isn't just a case of swiping left or right and just doing whatever you want. So this app is developed by the country's government-linked cultural center, the Tebian Cultural Institute. Now the name Hamdam comes from Farsi, which means companion. So here's a bit more information. Individuals must complete a psychology test. The app does not use photographs. So this is nothing like Tinder where you see a hot chick and you swipe to the left or the right, whichever. I don't use Tinder, so I don't know which way you swipe. Or if a girl sees some hot guy, she can swipe to date him. Instead, it's going to use the information from the psychology test to match people with their best options. So it's all about personality, I guess, not about looks. Now, what could possibly go wrong with this policy? Not using photographs. I mean, you could meet your perfect woman online if you're an Iranian dude. She's got so much in common with you. She likes to watch sports and TV. She likes to play video games. She seems like the perfect woman. And then you meet her in person and she's um, ugly as all hell. And what about the women? A woman could find the man of her dreams, her prince of Persia. And then she meets him in person and he's the ugliest man you've ever seen in your life. The app introduces the families together with the presence of service consultants. So these are the consultants who will be advising the couple for four years after they get married if things work out. So not quite like Tinder. So why is the Iranian government launching this dating app? Well, this article by Thomas Helm in the National News digs into it a little bit. And he points out that Marriage rates and birth rates are tumbling right now in Iran. Now, Iran had massive population growth in the last 60 odd years, but that's slowing down now. But the population is still projected to increase over the next 40 years. Now, we're going to be looking at graphs and statistics in a little bit to look at that. Now, this app is completely free of charge. So that really shows you how the Iranian government is really trying to match people up and encourage marriage and having more kids. It's arguably a sign that the state is failing to keep religious institutions and norms at the forefront of young people's minds. So this is like a religious argument for this, that the Iranian government, Iran is a conservative country, but it's not as conservative as you might think because a lot of young people are not really that religious anymore. And the whole idea of marrying young and having lots of kids, young people are not following that lifestyle anymore. And also what's happening is there's a rapidly aging population. Now this is the practical demographic side of things. This is probably the real reason why they're doing this. The religious reasons might be a factor, but it's all about the effect this trend is going to have on the economy in years to come. Now, because the Iranian population was growing so fast over the last 40, 50 years, they actually had a family planning program that began in the late 80s. And this was so successful that it was it was almost too successful that the birth rates plummeted down to below replacement rates. So 2.1 is the magic number when it comes to birth rates. 2.1 is the replacement rate. If it's higher than 2.1, it means you're going to have more people. If you've got less than 2.1, it means the population will decrease and you won't have enough people to replace the current population. So Iran's birth rate dipped below 2.1 for a small period of time. Now it's gone up a little bit since then. So we're going to have a look at that soon. And also he points out that young people who don't have money, and this is a problem not just in Iran, but all over the Western world. Young people just don't have the money to settle down and get married and have lots of kids. So in this Al Jazeera article, they point out another initiative that the government unveiled. Now, the, the dating app, I heard about this because this was like a fairly big news story back in July of 2021. But they unveiled something else. It was a bill in government. It was uh, Iran's conservative dominated parliament passed the bill titled Population Growth and Supporting Families. It mandates the government to offer significant financial incentives for marriage 
and to encourage people to have more than two children while limiting access to abortion. Now this measure working in conjunction with the dating app, this could work very well because as I said, a big problem is financial. People just don't have the money, but also there's an even bigger problem in the world and that's people just want to be freer when they're younger, like especially in their 20s. They don't want to be settling down. They don't want to be burdened by kids. And I think that's the big issue. And it's not just in Iran, it's all over the West especially. So let's look at some graphs and stats. So here is the red line showing you 2021. Hasn't updated for 2022 yet, but the population in 2021 is 85 million. Now let's go back here to 1950. The population was just 17 million. And look what's gonna happen in the immediate future. The next 40 years, it's projected to go up to about 105 million. So right now it's 85. And it's projected up to about 105. So what's the issue here? The issue I think is this projection is, I think it, it's overestimating what the population is going to be. Let's have a look at the fertility rates. Back in 1960, it was almost seven children per woman, 6.9. And it dipped slowly in 1974. It's gone down to 6.2, which is still absolutely huge. Then it goes up to about 6.5. Now watch it plummeting from the 80s. So this is when they introduced the family planning. It goes down to 5 in 89. And then it just keeps plummeting 3.2, 2.6. And watch all the way down in 2005, 2006 to 1.8. And in 2007, 1.807, I think that was the lowest. Now that's below 2.1, that's below replacement rate. So I think that's when the alarm bells started ringing. But look what's happened since then. It's actually climbed back up a little bit. So it goes back up to 1.9 in 2012. And here we go up to 2019. It's 2.1. So it's just about at the replacement rate. So right now the BERT rate is 2.1. It's right at the replacement rate. And here it says the population of Iran is increasing at an alarming rate. Now... If this is true, then why is the Iranian government getting so worried about falling birth rates? Well, because I think this graph is overestimating and they can see the writing on the wall. And maybe they've studied other countries and they've seen what's happened in other countries that the projections actually, they get projected downwards over time. I think by, let's say, 2030, they're saying the population could be 92.7 million when it's probably going to be less than that if the Iranian government doesn't do something drastic to try and increase birth rates. Because the birth rates, while they've gone up slightly, this rate here, if, if it stays at 2.1, it means the population will just stay as it is. Now, I think part of this projection has to do with immigration. Um, it's also due to people migrating from surrounding countries such as Afghanistan and Iraq. To the west of Iran, you have Iraq, and to the east, you have Afghanistan. And these two countries have had a lot of people fleeing the country because of war in both these countries. And Iran is getting a lot of these people. And that explains some of the growth over the last 20 odd years. But the, the birth rates within Iran are just at replacement rates now. Now look at this growth rate. See, it's peaked around 1985. And watch how it plummets because of this family planning initiative, which was too successful. And now the rate has just gone way down. This is the historical growth rate. Right now it's 1.34, which is actually not bad, but they can see the writing on the wall. They can see that it's been decreasing. Now it was even lower back in 2010, it was 1.1. Now compare that to back in 1985, it was over 4%, absolutely huge. And that's when they took drastic action and this family planning initiative worked. And here we can see the projections for the future. And we have green all the way until 2060. And it's only around 2065 that the population is expected to decrease. Now, I don't know if these projections include more immigrants from Afghanistan and Iraq, because that may not hold up those countries you know, may improve and you have less people immigrating to Iran. Like Iran is not, shall we say, a country that millions and millions of people all over the world want to flee to. It's just that Iran is right beside these two countries and that's why people fled to Iran. It wasn't because they particularly wanted to go to Iran. Now let's look at Iran's population pyramid and this is where you can see the problem because right now the biggest age group is like mid to late 30s. You have like 1.7 million 
people who are age 36 right now and look how many uh, 21 year olds there are about a million just over a million so when these people in their 30s get old and retire you're not going to have the people younger to pay the taxes to pay the pensions and the health care but look at the bottom you can see how the number is actually increasing again so iran's population pyramid is actually not that bad if you look at iranians under 10 it's actually starting to increase compared to those between 10 and 21 so we might have a problem in about 30 years when this age group retires but if this trend continues here, that the crisis may be averted because the number of young people is increasing. So in the last few years, we can see the birth rate slowly going up. So it's a question of how much more is this going to go up by? Because it's going to have to go up a little bit more to avoid catastrophe in about 30 years. But this population pyramid is nowhere near as bad as many European countries. So Iran, it looks like their government is being proactive in this. They can see the danger here with this age group. So this dating app, let's see how that goes. Let's see if this trend will continue and the population pyramid will start to get fatter at the bottom again. The government, I have to give them kudos. They're actually taking proactive action. And a, a lot of other governments, they have their heads buried completely in the sand. Okay, guys, so if you like this video, subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos about populations in various countries. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. See you guys later.